everyone, my name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jen and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a bit of a writing discussion. So I was doing a little bit of thinking specifically about writing seasons, writer's block, creativity waves, and things like that. Because I know a lot of us on the internet do like to discuss writer's block and that kind of thing, or like even reading slumps or whatever have you, where you feel like things don't quite align and you just, your brain isn't in the mood or just hasn't been really creative or you're finding yourself pushing yourself to do things Things, that sort of thing. So I think that for me at least, I've never really put stock in writer's block, the term writer's block and the idea that like sometimes you're writing is just hardcore like stop block everything's done, which I know makes a lot of people mad when I say I don't really believe in writer's block. I do have to acknowledge I live in a pretty neurotypical brain. I understand that for other people, things are different. So for myself, I believe I don't have writer's block. What I have instead, or what I've noticed about my writing and my creativity patterns throughout the last decade, or however long I've been properly writing and paying attention to my writing self is that I go through creativity seasons and it's often tied to my mental health. Of course it is. But that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. So the, the idea of me as an unpublished author or writer, author and writer, I undergo a lot of creativity seasons and often they don't really line up properly with like spring, summer, fall, winter, that kind of a thing. For me, my creativity seasons line up more with mental health waves and big events in my life or big changes, etc. Etc. So I don't really have much to say on writer's block. It's a very similar thing to a book slump or a reading slump in it for me, in that I don't experience it in the same way that other people seem to, where it's like a hard stop. Everything just kind of ends and you can't really force through it. It feels like you're up against a wall. If I find myself reaching that moment in my writing, that means that something needs to change for me. So either if I find like the writing isn't coming as smoothly or something's just not working and I can't figure out what it is, I need to backtrack to where it was working in the story and figure out what went wrong. So it's a lot of just like <laughs> going back and fixing the story itself, not in the actual like flow of writing being bad for me. And sometimes of course, day to day life gets in the way or your mental state will get in the way and you just don't want to write that day. And that's totally fine, of course. Same with like reading slumps. Because I am a mood reader, I have books on the go at all times. <laughs> there is never a moment where I do not have a book on the go. I think I have like eight on the go at this moment or six to eight is usually my sweet spot. So I never really experienced the reading slump where I don't want to pick anything up. I'm just not reading anything. Nothing's happening for an extended period of time. Usually it might be for like a couple days where I just need a break from reading or need a refresh in genre, if you will. So I just need to kind of reshuffle and figure myself out. So what I found with those two <laughs> kind of like typical terms that we use here on YouTube, whether we're talking about the author tube community or the book tube community, is that it's more of a mental health situation for me and like a rejigging and kind of seeing what's wrong with the situation. So when it comes to writing, I usually need to backtrack. And if like, if it lasts for more than just a couple days in a row, I need to backtrack and figure out what's wrong with the story because that's usually what's the matter. Or I just need to wait a day and get into a different creative mood kind of a thing, right? With reading, it's usually, okay, I need to either take a break for a couple days, which is totally fine, and like refine that joy again, or I just need to switch up genres and find find a little bit of something else in my reading that'll make me happy. So that's kind of where I'm at with the more traditionally used writer's block or reading slumps that we say, like the, the terms writer's block or the terms reading slumps. That's usually where that lands for me. So instead, I like to kind of look at the creativity seasons, seasons of writing or creativity waves, I guess you could call it as well. And I've noticed it throughout my life that there are some instances where if I'm really busy with university, for example, when I was in university getting my degree, there were a long periods of time where I just didn't do any creative writing because of course my brain was completely filled with other things things and other writing that I would needed to be doing, right? That happened with my creative reading as well. I rarely read any books just for me during my university tenure because I was reading books for my re university tenure, right? So I didn't have the time or the space in my life to devote for those things. I did notice a lot that when I would get back into the mood for writing or get back into a new creativity wave or experience a lot of like inspiration and like drive and motivation to write, then I would kind of stick with it for a longer period of time. Most recently, 
recently, I guess I could probably say, like once I got out of university, that kind of became more of a common thing was when I would be in a full creativity mood to work on things like that because I stopped having all of that academic pressure and writing and reading to do. I had more time to do things for myself. And with my job that I had, I found because I was leaving at the end of the day or leaving at four, 4.30, whenever I left work, I had the space to do whatever I wanted. University never let that happen, right? Cause you're, <laughs> there's always something to do <laughs> at university. So having the space once I left work or once I left the academic, academia sphere and then became a part of the working sphere opened up so much creativity for me which was so exciting like I got to be able to participate in NaNoWriMo for the first time properly without having to worry about the 8,000 papers that I had going on I my reading just exploded like I was looking back at Goodreads I was doing one of my TikToks a while ago where it was like talking about your favorite books of the past decade which was really hard to do because I only had been using Goodreads since 2017 so I kind of had to back up in my brain and kind of think of like what I was reading. Um, I'm pretty sure I just guessed on a lot of those books <laughs> because I don't remember what my favorite books were from those years that I didn't document my reading. But I noticed on Goodreads is that like back in 2017, 2018, 2019, my reading was like 30 books, 30 to 50 books. And now that I am out of university, that number jumped exponentially. I read upwards of 130 to 140 books every year now because I have the space for it. So again, like it's having the space in my life allows me to have the space in my brain for this kind of stuff. So having that space, I've now noticed the waves of creativity that I experience because I don't have the like structured university life getting in the way, I guess you could say, of my creativity spikes and spirals and stuff. So it, it was a lot of like reading in the summer and writing in the summer and then going back to academia in the winter and, and fall and all that kind of stuff. So that would kind of structure my life that way. But once I'm out of university, that's when I notice the creativity waves. So in 2020, I experienced one of the biggest creativity waves that I've ever had, which was wonderful. Mainly because of the pandemic, I was partially laid off of my job. So I was working maybe 10 hours a week. I had all the time in the world. I was alone at home taking care of my dog because my parents were still working. All this kind of stuff lined up and I participated in Camp Nanos. I had so many ideas brewing in my head and I just was creating all the time. And it was just so wonderful. That's also like a period of time where I was really working on my YouTube channel because I had started it in 2019. So I was like really getting into it in 2020. Things were just really working. And I rode that wave of creativity well into 2021. But then when I started working again and life got busier and I was now working 30 to 40 to 50 hours a week, my life got a little bit stuck. My creativity stuck. And I experienced one of the creativity waves dropping completely as valid because of course my life was crazy at that time. Like my mental health went down in the fall and I was moving and I was experiencing not only my very first full-time job, but working a full-time job and a part-time job at the same time, which just devoured my life and my attention span. And I didn't write or really do anything creative from like, I know I finished a draft of project dream. I think it was in either September, October of 2021. And from that point on, I didn't really do anything creative other than read and, you know, create YouTube videos. I didn't do anything creative until I didn't pick up the writing again until like January, I think. And, or it was around Christmas break when I wrote the first chapter of Project Dragon. I picked that one up and that was great because that having that like break in my creativity spiking and like having a lot of inspiration and having ideas all the time and being able to write all the time or at least having it in my head all the time and creating and doing different things, having that break break in that and dealing with the more mental health issues and kind of getting myself back together really helped when I was back in it at the beginning of this year. And I think that's wonderful. So I don't really know the pattern of my creativity seasons. Looking back, I can kind of see the correlations between life and my creativity patterns, because obviously the busier you are, the less creative you are or the less time you have to be creative, not necessarily the less creative you are. It's just the less time you have to actually be creative, right? Or enjoy little little things because you don't, you literally do not have the time for it. So I think that's what I've really noticed. <laughs> I've always been kind of on the hunt for things that really keep me motivated as a writer and keep me up because I know so many of us creators just in general, not only uh, writers or readers or what have you, it's just creators in general, the burnout of doing it every day, all day, over and over and over again is so real. And that of course correlates to mental health issues and that correlates to just feeling apathetic about yourself and then feeling like you're in one of these slumps or blocks or 
creative season down falls. I really don't know the point of this video. It's mainly just to discuss how important it is to take care of yourselves, my guys. Like, don't force it if it's not there. Take the breaks you need. I know it's hard sometimes when you're living a life, or especially in a society that we are, Western society specifically, that is very so <laughs> intensely locked into churning out of work into money, you know? Like, we are always, I see it every day on TikTok, people turning their hobbies into jobs. It doesn't become something fulfilling anymore, right? Because you're doing it just to get the money, to make ends meet and that kind of a thing. You're not just enjoying the creative adventure of things for yourself. So again, that leads to burnout. And it's just, <sighs> we live in such a crazy society that I think oftentimes we need to kind of take a step back and really look at ourselves and look at our creative seasons, if you will, to really see how best to take care of ourselves. So I know now from looking back at my past couple years that this time of year, that I'm walking, that we are walking into the fall season and then the holiday season after that. One, my mental health is usually bad, <laughs> thanks to seasonal depression. Second, that this is usually the time of year that I have been structured, thanks to the academia world and having school start at the same time every year. I have been structured to be less creative around this time because I've done it for 21 years from school up to the end of university. So I know that the fall into the winter time next year, because mental health is not there and because I'm structured to be less creative during these times, that I need to be kinder to myself during these times. And I need to not worry as much if I don't hit my imaginary deadlines that I've given myself, because I know I'm more creative in the spring and summer because that's when my brain kind of wakes up a little bit. So even though I don't quite know my patterns yet because there have been times where I, I, in the past, where I just haven't done any writing for like six months. And then I come back to it and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I remember I can still do this kind of a thing. Then that's because of university and, and all that kind of stuff being in the way. Now that I'm out of university and I'm kind of watching how my mental health goes and you know, coming out of a pandemic and all that stupidness, but it's really important to take care of ourselves creatively. And if we experience a block, a slump, or a downward spike in our creative seasons, however you want to say it, that we don't, you know, kick ourselves for it, that we do things to refill the well. So when I am feeling slumpish, I like to refill my well by watching other creators. I like to watch a lot of like writing vlogs, especially Kate Kavanaugh, I love her videos. They always jig something in me that gets me going again for inspiration. It makes me want to write and sit down or I just read a ton of fantasy, not even just fantasy, just a ton of books that make me happy that inspire me by authors that I really love. I go out and find new kind of books or new content to watch. I really love D&D, so you guys know I'm always watching D&D podcasts. I'm always going out there, watching new TV shows, watching new movies, just kind of giving myself the space to be influenced by all these different pieces of content and media, of course. That's what I love to do there. And I also find that keeping myself accountable, if I do want to hit goals and stay on top of myself with the productivity, I love the fact that I have you guys to do that with because I do a, usually a <laughs> weekly live stream where I talk to you guys on Saturdays. We do some writing sprints together. We usually do about four. It's doing those little things to keep myself in a writing mood, even if it's not continuing out throughout the week. I know I have those points every weekend, almost every weekend, depending if I'm in the city, that I come back to that helps me stay kind of in the groove of it and making it more of a habit and a regular thing rather than something that I would do in a very condensed amount of time when I could, you know? Does that make any sense? NaNoWriMo and NaNoWriMo-like events are all well and good because they obviously, you know, people band together, you get the motivation for this kind of stuff and then you write every day for 30 days straight. But <laughs> when you do something like that, you also have have to give yourself leeway after that's done for a break, right? And I'm really, I'm actually really glad that NaNoWriMo is a November thing because it's like the last hurrah of the year that you can get the creativity out. And then what's next? December, holiday month, right? That is the month where most people are so busy. Things are coming to an end. There's holidays, there's all sorts of stuff going on that you can relax a little bit into going into the new year and resetting goals and that kind of a thing. So I like that NaNoWriMo is at the end of the year, but again, I find that doing <laughs> writing exercises like that, I have to remind myself that that's not a realistic everyday thing that I can do for an extended period of time. A month is about 
as long as I can do that for before my brain starts to fizzle out physically. So though I love doing that, as you guys know, I did that writing a 70k novel in 30 days challenge for a second story. I love doing those kind of things and keeping myself accountable. And like, you know, I did that through vlogs and TikTok and whatever. I think the accountability thing is huge for productivity. Then it's not just yourself making you do it, even though it is mainly yourself making you do these things. It is other people having that expectation of those updates every day or or, you know a vlog at the end of it that you keep promising your followers or in the simplest of forms I know my friends recently participated in NaNoWriMo when I didn't I think it was in 2021 because I was not in a headspace to do NaNoWriMo for the first time in a long time I watched the two of them go through NaNoWriMo and update each other every day and just having like a friend to do it with is just the best in like the most basic form, just having someone you can update every day. And like, if they can come and be like, oh, have you gotten your words done today? Having that accountability is amazing. So I think what the point of this video has become as I keep talking about it is take care of yourselves when it comes to creativity. I know a lot of us on the internet are, you know, content driven and numbers driven and all this kind of stuff. I myself fall into it all the time. This past month, my numbers and my views have gone down like, crazy like it's been like all summer my views were going on and up and up and up and up and September hit and they just dropped and I don't know why I'm assuming it's because like again people kind of in seasons of watching stuff and it's back to school and that kind of a thing so it's just kind of reflecting universally I'm not entirely sure but it's one of those things that I always have to remind myself that it's not about the numbers it's not about turning out content all the time it's about doing something that I really enjoy and I really enjoy talking to you guys about books and having you guys comment on my videos and having you guys show up to my live streams that's what feels me to keep creating for you guys even though sometimes I feel like I'm in a creativity slump and I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to writing specifically guess is why you probably clicked on this video because I probably will title it like a writing discussion like writing writer's block or something there's something that we can always do and it's just pay attention to ourselves and see if we are you know in those writing seasons or you know experiencing something where we just need a break and we just need to take care of ourselves. I don't know if this is coming off of me, you know, having a therapy session earlier today and just being very aware of my brain right now, but we just collectively need to take care of ourselves, my guys. And I hope that you guys are out there taking care of yourself as well. This is totally veered away from the talk about writing writer's block and slumps and, and writing seasons, but I think it's so important when it comes to creativity is that we don't want to force it at all times. I know it's hard when we're working on deadlines and that kind of stuff, but still, even within those deadlines in a shortened space, taking care of ourselves is number one and should always be number one. You come first, right? So who cares if you're, if you're sitting in a writing slump or a reading slump or a writing block situation where like things just aren't working very well, take a little bit of a break and give yourself the space to be okay with that break, you know? Cause I know it's, <laughs> it's so hard when you see other people out there doing things and hitting milestones, you're not doing it because of many millions of different reasons, right? I know it's hard to not compare ourselves to other people, but it's really important. That's kind of where I want to leave it for now in the giant discussion-y section of this video. <laughs> I also wanted to add on at the end of this video, kind of a writing update, if you will, for myself, because if you guys have been following me for a while, y'all know I like to do these a little periodically, a little writing updates, but I think because of the topic of today's video of like, you know, creative creativity waves and creativity seasons, I know that I need to be kinder to myself going into the season and that's okay. I have a lot of goals as you guys know, if you've kind of been watching my blogs or if you've been hanging out on my live streams and stuff like that, I have a couple goals coming to the end of this year that deal with like pretty big things. Like I would really like to get a second story, my book, my cozy fantasy book that's going to be coming out in 2023, hopefully ready for an editor, perhaps another pass of beta readers ready for a potentially early 2023 publication day. Knowing my myself and knowing that this is usually the season where my creativity dips, I just have to remind myself that that's okay if I don't hit all those goals right away. But that's one thing. A second story is going to be coming to you guys in 2023. I am really hoping 
for early 2023, maybe not necessarily like winter, but like maybe spring is probably where I'm aiming for. Hopefully soon after that, I'm going to have the second book in that series released for you guys. So I'm also hoping that I can, I'm hoping that I will be able to participate in NaNoWriMo this year and do the second book in that series for NaNoWriMo this year so I can have that draft undergoing and hopefully will be released to you guys maybe in the fall of 2023 if all things line up right. That's kind of, you know, self-publishing journey, me having to figure out things, but it's, it's exciting. Um, as for my middle grade that's been on query since the beginning of 2022, it's still on query. I need to, another goal of mine is to actually properly write a synopsis for that book and revisit the beginning of that book. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do that in the end of the year, maybe in October, because I don't really have anything solid going on in October, but I want to revisit the beginning and make sure that it's like as snappy as it can be. And I want to revisit my querying properly because I've kind of taken a backseat to it. I'm not as actively out there querying as much as I probably should be, but I also need to write a synopsis for it so that I can start querying more people who require a synopsis because I've been putting that off for literally nine months now because it's September. <laughs> Those are the main writing goals that I have going on right now. For Project Dragon, I wanted to have a draft done by the end of summer, but that's just not happening because it's already fall. <laughs> it's literally the first day of fall and I just don't have a draft. <laughs> like, I, I don't. I haven't worked on it because I've been focusing on Project Second Story instead, which is fine because I think Project Dragon is going to be a project that I work on for a long time to get to where I want it to be, even though I really want it to be done and a thing that I can start like having people read because it's so epic and such a big fantasy story. It's going to take me a while to get there, but that's kind of where I'm at with my three major projects. I don't really have anything else on the go because I don't have the mental space for it or even the physical space for it it <laughs> in my life. I can't slot anything else into things, but I do have some fun channel things that I'm trying to think about because I've now hit a thousand subscribers, which you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for being around. I'm trying to think of other things that I can do to pull in my channel subscription situation. That'll be fun. More things that I can do on the channel as well coming in 2023. But yeah, this is a long video that's kind of veered off the original topic of writer's block and seasons of writing, but I hope you enjoyed either way. Let me know down below if you have any adding to this conversation that you want to do. If you guys experience writer's block or reading slumps or the creativity seasons like I kind of described in today's video and what your thoughts are about it. Also, I guess most importantly, tell me your favorite way to refill your creative well. What is one thing that you love to consume, whether books, whether it's a new genre of book or a new TV show or something like that? What is one of your favorite things to watch or do or even go outside and do to take care of your own self? Because I would love to know. And I think we should talk about that more often on YouTube. Either way, my friends, uh, my throat is sore from talking. So I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Make sure to like and subscribe and join me on this journey. Let me know down below also if you're excited for a second story because I will have more on that at some point I guess for you guys as things start kicking into gear for now I'll catch you in another video very soon stay kind and keep on reading and writing <laughs> all the things and most importantly taking care of yourself <laughs>